Okay, so we have finished our duotone color. We've played with layer styles as well. We've merged it all into one thing. We have flat color, duotone. Now we're going to duplicate all our duotone. And now I'm going to go to image. Well, let me rename it so you understand what this is now. This is going to be what's called full spectrum coloring. And full spectrum is when you're not limited to a local color and its variations for how you color. So I'm going to go to image, adjustment, and hue saturation. And instead of just playing with the lightness or the saturation, I'm going to play with the hue. And I'm going to shift this. It's like psychedelia to a totally different color hue. Something I think that's kind of complementary and kind of interesting. Maybe that, right? Now that's not full spectrum color. That's just duotone color with different colors. But I have that layered on top of my duotone color. I'm going to lock my duotone color. Now what I can do is use my eraser. You can do it hard edged or soft edged, but generally full spectrum is subtle, so you do it soft edged. So I'm going to use a 0% hardness eraser. I'm going to do it at around 50%. I'm going to turn on my gray background because that kind of helps me see what I'm doing. Nice large eraser brush. Pressure sensitive to scale. And I'm just going to start erasing away where I want my original coloring to show. Like the green eyes instead of the yellow eyes. And this starts to blend these different colors together. So I have my duotone color, then I have my full spectrum color. I can duplicate my full spectrum color. It will deepen it a little bit. I can use different layer styles or blending modes. I can also adjust it again. Hue saturation, change the hue. Change the color. So maybe some purple will help. Maybe some more yellows and oranges and greens will help. You get to choose if you want to play with full spectrum. Yeah, I think kind of the purples are pretty interesting. Like right at the corners. But then I lose something in the mouth that I like. So I'm going to erase out from there. Erase out from here. Get back to more of my original mouth color. A little bit. So the reason this is so different is because now within the oranges I have pinks, I have purples, I have yellows. Within the pinks I have purples. Just using different colors in different places. And you can decide how much you want to use of this. So this is what I had before. And this is with one layer of full spectrum. This is with another layer of full spectrum. Maybe I just want one of those layers. Because I think it's interesting. And then here's another technique I really like at this stage. It's not only about coloring, it's about texturing. So right now everything is perfectly smooth and filled with those pixels. What if I want to make it look a little less smooth? If I go to dissolve as a blending mode, it will help give me some of this discrete pixel mixing of my full spectrum over my duotone. And I think that can be pretty interesting. If I want to shift my other full spectrum, I just want to shift the whole thing. I go to image adjustments, hue saturation, and I'm going to shift everything a little bit warmer. And I can even just darken it all if I want, or brighten it, or even make it more colorful to kind of compete with the top. So full spectrum can be a lot of fun, 
and it's not a lot of work because you've already set up all your lighting and all your variations. All right. Now, lastly, I'm going to make, I'm going to select all these color layers, turn off the background, turn off the line art, right? Select all my color layers and folders, the full spectrum, the duotone, the fat color. I'm going to hold down option, layer, merge layers, and then I'll call this my master color. It's like your secret sandwich sauce has all of it in one. And on that, just to finish off your coloring, underneath your black line art, you can use dodge and burn. You can use sponge. You want to make sure it looks good on black. You want to make sure it looks good on gray. You want to make sure it looks good on white. And what I'm going to do is just on this master file, burn a little bit in some areas where I want to bring out the color. And now it doesn't matter if it saturates it or changes the hue, because this is now full spectrum anyway. This is like every color trick in the book. If I want a shadow underneath the teeth, I can put that back in. If I lost it, Maybe I don't because it's too much work. <laughs> but this is where you kind of really control your color in all ways on this combined layer. This upper lip, darken that a little bit. You can use sponge and desaturate or resaturate. all things we work with in digital coloring. Are you thinking of what your end result is? You know, what is the audience looking for from your illustration? What are you trying to say with your illustration of the words, suffer no fools? It's looking like a cosmic deity laughing at me. Okay, now that I've done that, well, if I've done burn, I can also do dodge and I can add highlights. Right? I just don't want you to forget all of your options. I'm doing it on midtones. I'm doing it with a soft brush that's large. I can, you know, brighten it up in certain places. I think maybe I've lost a little bit with all the coloring. Because that can happen. We can lose ourselves. This light bulb in the middle, that should probably be brighter, right, as a color but maybe not as bright as I had. And because that's all on top of all of your different coloring, you can then blend that in. You can set that on dissolve if you want to get that texture. And you can play with layer styles as well. You know, if I really wanted to amp it up, I'd overlay it all. Or you can use pin light or soft light. So endless variations with our color. Or just use the darker ones, or just use the lighter ones. And you want it to look good on black, on gray, on white. Actually going to goose its saturation a little bit. And warm it up a little bit. On my master file. Yep, so that's what that helped with. The master file, the dodging and burning, kind of brought it all together for me. Okay, now done with full spectrum color and master color. Now we have our black line art. We can do more with our black line art if we want. We can add dissolves to that. 
like this, like make a duplicate of our black line art, take its opacity down and fill that with a dissolve too, which I kind of like in the shadows. And then we can play with that. So once everything we want is working underneath our black lines, then we have our finished sandwich. It's a good time to save, but then we can do special effects on top of the black lines. And these are called color holds. So the first type of color hold that's really common is what's called a replacement color hold. It's where you duplicate your vector line art. By duplicating it, it becomes unlocked. You can keep it as a vector, but you're going to double click and you're going to add color overlay. I usually like to do this on a gray background. So when you're on a gray background, you can see your black line art clearly. If I hit color overlay, instead of filling it with black, I can fill it with any kind of color I want. So that's it with pink. For this, I might use a grayish dark green to kind of complement a lot of the reds and oranges in the design. Now these can really tax your uh, your processor, these layer styles, but they're worth it. So once you find one that you think might work, like this green, I'm going to save. Now, I don't want that green to be just solid like that. So what I can do is then make that a dissolve at a lower opacity so that the black comes through, but the green is mixed in. So now you can see that the black line art, at least on my computer screen, has those kind of green flecks in it now too. Other types of color holds are just ones that go over the top of the black lines. So I'm going to take my black line art from my black line art layer, and now I'm just going to use my magic wand and instead of selecting the empty space that the black lines create that we colored behind, I'm going to select with contiguous certain lines, like the line around this light bulb. I'll hold down shift and I'll select this one too. And I'm going to make this light bulb glow like Wonder Woman's lasso. Make a duplicate of it. And on that duplicate, I'm going to do a full color overlay, but it's not going to be green this time. It's going to be like an orangish yellow. I can steal it from my own image. Something like that. And then I can even add like an outer glow to it. Make it big, make it glowing. See how that's going to affect not just the black lines around it, but also the ones on the edges of it. It's actually lighting that just with that layer style. And then I can actually rasterize that layer style if I want to blur it out a little bit. So now that it's rasterized, I can turn it on and off, but I can also gouge and blur. So you can keep it as sharp as you want, as distorted as you want. I'm going to soften it, and I'm going to set it to screen so it brightens. And then I can always add the layer style again if I want to. An outer glow. I can even add an inner glow. I can make that thing just really glow if I want, right in the middle of that head. All with layer styles on top of your black line art. So that's what I had before. This is what I have with that layer style. Kick in, come on. You know you, you want it. There it is. <laughs> All right. And I can always modulate the opacity of it as well.
So I think that's about a good amount. Save my work.